I'm here with Sindiswa Dumana. You are the co-founder of the Isipo Charity Trust. Yes. Thank you. Now, can I call you Cindy? Yes. Okay. Cindy, so how did the Isipo Charity Trust come about? What is what is your story behind how the trust got started? It was when most people were dying of HIV and AIDS here in our community. Myself and David met in Cremstown Prison. It's a correctional service, but it's a prison. Then when we came out, we came to stay here in Patterson. David is from Cremstown. I'm originally here from Patterson. So many people were dying and most people were not disclosing their status then. So we saw a need to form a support group of people living with HIV and AIDS. Myself, I was diagnosed in 2001, January, at the Grimstone Correctional Service as HIV positive. Then when I came out to form that support group of people living with HIV and AIDS, it's where we started this organization. Started as a project first as a simple HIV and AIDS project. But as the years go by, it developed to We owned a building, then we were called Isipo Charity Trust. How did you come up with the name Isipo? It was a gift because we, we termed it as a gift from God. Because and we are helping many people. Now, um, when you say you're helping a lot of people, can you tell us a little bit more about what the Isipo Trust does today? Okay, initially it was the, those people that were HIV positive or which suffered from AIDS were dying, leaving their children to their grandmothers. So and we opened, so we saw a need to, to open a crash, a daycare center. Started with 15 children then at the old building, municipality building that we were, use, we were using in, from 2001 up to 2007. Other children lost their parents, both parents. We housed the seven orphans after this building was built by donations from Akamakala and all those that are on that board, on that signpost. We housed the seven children which were orphaned, aging from three years up to 12 years then. Some have passed the grade 12 uh, at the university. Wow. Some are still at school. So tell me, in terms of funding and support, um, tell me a little bit about how the Amakala Foundation got involved and the support that they've offered and what a difference it's made. Amakala has been supporting us as from day one since we were in that old building that we were using the municipality building. They fundraised for us for this building. They through the, the people that were visiting Amakala from overseas, they do fundraising and they bought this plot. It was just a plot, an old warehouse, and they built this facility. So, and still then they are still supporting us if we don't have there are people that are not on stipend here that are not at, under any donor so Amakala are making it a point every month that those people are getting paid they also built that those two classes there of the crash and while the government was not supporting it they are also supporting that crash giving the children food and tell me how has this organization made a difference for the community? Well, while we were funded by NACOSA, it was a global fund, started for in 2001 up to 2006. We were giving food to the children, we were feeding the children, 150 children per month. We were buying for them uniforms and Christmas clothes. So when NACOSA ended, the funding ended in 2016, we didn't have that much to give to them. But it has helped the community a lot. 
Most people now can disclose, are uh, free to disclose about their HIV status. They are taking their treatment now. Now the people are not dying as they were dying before we established this organization. That's what we are proud of. That's a great achievement. Yes. What is your dream for the Isipu Charity Trust? My dream is that it can, even if I die, it can carry on. The people that are working here can carry on this legacy, helping those people that are in need. That's what I'm dreaming of every day. I wish it cannot die. But like people from Amakala, I'm sure it won't die. They are our pillars of strength here. If you had to give a message to the young children that their parents are suffering um, or have, you know, with HIV or, or living with it, what is the message you want to tell these children? I always tell them that I was diagnosed in 2001, January on the 26th. I don't know how many years I'm still having this virus inside me, but here am I still life, still alive. If they can keep on taking their treatment and they, if they can not hide this disease, because it's there, it cannot go away. You must try, take your, just take your treatment and then live a, a positive life. They must take care of their children, of their parents, and they must not get infected. The government has supplied us with condoms and stuff. They must use the condoms wherever they are going to be sexually active. That's the message I'm always giving them. Thank you. One last question before we go. How important is education? Is that? It is very important because without education, they can't go anywhere. They are going to end up working in those firms here in Baron Pedersen. The reason why we are having this library and this lab and these computers is because we want them to learn to be to be somebody at the end of the day. Because without education they can't go anywhere. Thank you. Is there anything you want to add before we go? I would like to thank Amakala for being there for us. Every time we are, having, are facing a, a problem, we cry to Jennifer. Jennifer responds very quickly. She never let us down. If I'm going to cry. I think on behalf of Amakala, the work that you're doing is incredible. And I think your legacy has already started, Cindy. Your legacy has already started, and you can see it in the work that you do here. So thank you for your time and effort that you put into the organization and what you do. And we really appreciate it. And you are making a difference. And that's what counts. All right. Thank you very much. Thank